Today on Animal Zone, we're at the beautiful Hotel Zaza, a pet-friendly hotel in Dallas, Texas. And joining us is the pet psychic, Laura Stinchfield, and Shannon, who's brought along her dog, Moose. And hey, Shannon. Yeah, hi, Moose. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Tell us, uh, wh where did Moose come from? Uh, Moose came from a local rescue here in Dallas called Dallas Dogger. And I got him when he was about six weeks old. And, and, uh, and he looks like he's uh, kind of taking in this all in, but probably a little stressed from it. Yeah. What do you, what do you think, Laura? Yeah, so Moose does have a problem, right, with like being in places where there's a lot of people, mm -hmm. correct? And he also has a problem with um, like a lot of the attention being on him. And I think that's like a really good thing to talk about to him and to help other an people who have animals like that. Um, to help them through it and like what people can do. So Moose, honey, can you tell us like how do you feel right now? I know you like your treats, right? How do you feel right now about being here and having like all the attention on you? What are you thinking? You know that everyone thinks you're handsome? <laughs> <laughs> and you, he says he also knows that it's a fun place to be. Yeah, because mommy's been excited to bring you. But you're also nervous of what people want of you. Well, we just want you to talk to me. That's all. We're just going to have you talk to me. But like when you go other places, like the vets, they need to do things with you. Like they need to trim your nails or they need to make sure that your body is okay. Can we talk about the vets? What does it feel like? What, what do you think? No. Oops. No? You don't want to talk about the vets? <laughs> so, okay. So like, what? <laughs> yeah. That sore subject. The other thing is, is like if you notice, like I'm square on a moose and I was like looking at him in the eyes, and so that's like a trigger for him too. So it's the subject of the vets, but then it's also me like skate, like looking straight on. And moose and I are friends, so it's like, right. you know, even that. So, moose, honey, what's a story that? Oh, the story. He says, This is a story that I need to tell. What's the story that you need to tell? He says, I just don't like anyone messing with me besides my mom and dad. Yeah. He says, you just should not be touching others' bodies without asking first. But they asked your mom, honey. They asked, like the vet asked your mom. And one of the things that I've noticed, especially today, is that you are using like the growling to get people to back up. And I noticed that you're doing it like on purpose a lot of times. Like it's not just like a reaction. Like you're you're making a conscious decision to do a growl when you feel uncomfortable. Are you doing that? What is? He says, Yeah, of course I'm doing that. When training with treats, it's important to make sure that the dogs don't learn that after a growl, then a treat comes. Teach them instead to move away. I like a behind command which teaches them to go behind you when they are nervous, then praise and treat that behavior. And so, so I want this to be something that's very, very important. The worst thing, Moose, that a dog can do is bite someone. That is the worst thing. And you are a, are a very strong, powerful breed. And a lot of people have some fear about your breed already, which makes all the more reason why, why you need to show how beautiful your heart is to people. And I know you're really good at that because when you feel comfortable, you're a super friendly, goofy guy. And that's something we need you to do more often, even when you're in a scary position. But we're not going to mention the VET word anymore. <laughs> no, today. we're not. And we appreciate you coming in with your mom, Shannon. And thank you very much for being here today. Thank you. Very interesting and nice yeah. to learn about dog behavior and some of the things we can do to try and make it work better. Talking with your animal about the vet. There. I wanted to add a few more things to this video about how to take your animal to the vet and how to make that successful experience for you and your pet. The first thing is to make sure that you are feeling confident. Um, it's important to like your veterinarian, like the office, like the people that are working there because if you are nervous and if you feel like you need to protect your animal in this situation, your animal is gonna pick that up and they're gonna start to feel nervous. So number one, you have to feel good, whether it's an emergency um, or it's, like I said, a routine checkup. 
And even if it's an emergency, you send them, if you have to let go of them and send them off, you say, it's going to be okay. These people are here to help you. That's the, that's another thing that's very important is that your animal knows that everyone that works at the veterinarian is there to help animals. I actually tell mine and clients animals that those people go to a lot of schooling so that they can make sure they are doing right by our animals and that they are keeping animals healthy and happy and living longer with their people. Um, the other thing that's important to explain to them is that everything that a person does to them at the vet, whether it's the veterinarian or the technician or someone who's just bringing them in, is to help the animal and to gain insight on how they're feeling and how the animal's feeling and how the animal is, how their body is doing. So I pretty much break it down for them. And I do this whether in my head while I'm in the office or before I go or if I'm preparing a client's animals for a dental or something, I will do it, you know, weeks, even weeks before. But I always tell them, that everything that the animal does, that the veterinarian does is for a reason. So if they are sticking a thermometer up the butt, that's to take your temperature. If they're looking in your ears, that's to see if you have an ear infection. They look in your mouth to see if you have a tooth infection. They shine a light in your eyes to see if you have um, anything going on with your eyes, if you can see okay. Uh, they palpate your abdomen to make sure you don't have a tumor in your abdomen. They might take urine from your bladder, which was what might hurt. And that's just to see how everything is going on inside of your bladder to make sure that urinary is okay, and your kidneys are okay. They're taking blood to make sure all your organs are okay. They might shave your paw or, or your, your wrist. And I just pretty much break it down. They put down that, they put that cold, um, uh, that cold instrument up to you to make sure that your heart and lungs are okay. And then I tell them that people language and, bo and animal body language are different. And so sometimes these people will might lean over your body to see how you are doing. And uh, that does not mean that they're being aggressive to you. Sometimes they're square onto you, staring at you in your eyes. And that's just that's just the way they need to stand to make sure that you're okay and that they are kind and that they're loving and that they really, really want to want to help you. And that they might, like if an animal has a hurt shoulder or something, they might manipulate your shoulder to see how far you can move it and what's your pain level. When an animal has pain, especially with like a German Shepherd, a cattle dog, or any of these breeds that are used to sort of like withholding their pain and like acting tough, I tell them the vet wants to know if you are in pain. So you can moan, you can flinch, um, just do something to let the vet know that that is something that hurts. So if they're touching your side, um, that is something that might hurt hurt you. I also have um, a meditation CD for how to know if your animal is in pain and it's really for death and dying that's out. That's a really, really great CD to help you connect with your animal before and after they pass away. But that first track is all about how to scan your animal's body for pain, which is great for um, the average person and during any time really. It's not really just before uh, death. And that is offered free on my YouTube channel, which is YouTube slash Pet Psychic, which you are probably on right now. Um, and you can find it there. You can also find it on my website, which is thepetpsychic.com. But I just kind of wanted to share that with you because a lot of people are kind of wondering. A lot of people are wondering too why some of these videos are short. They're short because they're part of a bigger a set, a TV show called Animal Zone, which is awesome. You should really watch the full videos of it. And you can find that at animalzone.org or you can go to my website, which is thepetpsychic.com and head on over to my blog and look for the Animal Zone videos on the sidebar and you will you can see either these videos where they're just the short segments of mine and then on those posts are also the full segment of 
of the full episode of Animal Zone, which are, are so awesome. It's dedicated to animal rescue. So there's so many more videos to come. Um, there's a lot of exciting things happening. And thank you guys for watching. I um, love to bring these videos to you. And hopefully there'll be more coming. Okay. You guys be well. Talk with the animals. Every time I count my blessings, I count you. Every time I count my blessings, I count you first. Every time I count my blessings, I count.